What is up everybody? My name is Famous and welcome to another episode on the channel. So today's episode is going to actually be focused more towards a tutorial to all of the YouTubers out there. So basically here's what's happening. With the Nintendo Switch having two different announcements regarding Pokemon content. The first one being Pokemon Quest and then the second one being Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and then Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I decided that it would actually be a really good idea for me to go ahead and purchase a Nintendo Switch and then share some of that gameplay on my channel. But in doing so, I figured it might also be a really good time to go ahead and teach some other people as well as to how you would actually capture the game footage of the Nintendo Switch. So even if you aren't a YouTuber, I do think you will find a lot of interest interest at least in figuring out how all this stuff works because there's actually a lot more that goes into it than what you might think. So first things first, let's talk about all of the items that you need. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a graph on the screen because I think it's going to kind of give you a little bit of a layout and then I'll actually show all of the devices as well. So first things first, you are going to need the actual console. In this case, it's going to be a Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is a little bit weird compared to some of the other consoles because it must be put into the dock to be able to actually capture its footage. That's because the HDMI port is actually in the dock and there isn't one actually on the actual console. So the next thing you're going to need is two different HDMI cords. And then in between that, you're going to need something called a capture card. In my case, I'm using the capture card for Elgato HD60, and it's going to have a USB plug-in as well that you can plug into your computer. So once you have all of that, you basically have to plug it lastly into a display. In this case above me, I've got the TV, that's where I have everything going to so I can see it while I am actually recording. But that's kind of talking about the equipment. There was something that I struggled with a little bit that I felt like it's going to be a good idea to cover as well, and that's actually going to be the software. So I personally use OBS. I'm going to show you exactly how I have it set up in OBS. I think that that's going to be really helpful for everyone to use. And also, by the way, if you are interested in any of this equipment, I actually have a ton of links down in the description if you're working on purchasing a Switch a capture card, anything like that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into OBS. So before we get started with OBS, I did want to go ahead and mention if your capture card does not come with a CD to put into a drive, you can instead just get one online. I'll have a link in the description, but basically just look up the name of the capture card and then type in driver. You will have to install it on your computer so that it will become compatible. So let's go ahead and talk about OBS. OBS is a program that I've actually been using for a couple years. I definitely enjoy it. So there's basically going to be two main versions that people use. There's the Classic and then there is the, another one called Studio. I'm showing you through Classic, but basically you're going to be doing the same thing. So I've actually created a scene that I call Switch and I've added in the video capture device. So that's really all you have to do to actually get in the footage but you need to go ahead and set up the actual video capture device. So I already have done that, so what you would do instead is just do add video capture device, and then it's going to recognize the Elgato capture card, but instead let's just go ahead and cover the properties, and then we'll talk about some of these settings as well. So first things first, let's stop from the, the top down. Elgato Game Capture HD to make sure that you actually have the right one. That's really the only device that I have. And then you can click Configure. When you click Configure, you can change the different devices. So while we are looking at the input devices, I want to show you something kind of weird that happens with the Nintendo Switch. Basically, basically it has a little bit of an issue with HDMI. So if you were to go down to Nintendo Switch, it's going to try to adjust it to an HD 720. So what I would recommend you to do is to just leave it on Xbox One and then change it to HD 1080p so that you can get the highest quality that you possibly can. There shouldn't really be any type of issue. So go ahead and click done once you have done that. Now, let's go ahead and head over back over to OBS settings. We're going to go ahead and scroll down. We've got a little bit to talk about. So you want to make sure that the resolution set to 1920 by 1080 and then 60 frames per second. That's just the max that 
you can do at this point in time. Later on, you'll be able to do 4K pretty frequently. So then for the audio input device, this is very important to know what to do with this. You want to make sure that it is set to the audio device because it's going to be able to capture the Nintendo Switch sound. That's very important, something that I definitely want to do. And then when you're talking about the output, you can either output it to the stream, which basically you won't hear anything, or you can output the audio to the desktop. But just know that it does jump around a little bit and it kind of, you know, catches on and off. But don't be too alarmed by that. As long as the actual footage is clean, it really doesn't matter. But if you do this option, I would recommend you to just put in some headphones and then do it that way. That way you're not picking up some extra noise. So we've got the output audio set to stream only. We are pretty much good to go. That's all you have to do. Once you click OK, it's going to kind of like freeze for a little bit and just reassess everything, make sure everything is good to go. And then at this point in time, if you're wanting to do something else, you can add in some other scenes. By the way, this happened to me last time. For some reason, it just moves it around. So you just want to go ahead and scale it to the proper size. So now we have set it to the proper size. That's just basically happening when it transitions from 1080p down to 720p or vice versa. It changes the frame size, so that's all you have to do. And then if you want to add on a webcam or do something like that, just simply click add, and then you can just do add on a different source. And in this case, we would want to add on a global source, and then I've got the webcam added and then you could just do something like that. Now, as you can see, there's me. You can put it, you can move it around, kind of do whatever you need to do. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to be able to make this happen. It's really not that complicated. The biggest hurdle is just buying all of the different pieces, if I'm being honest with you. As far as getting all this stuff set up, as long as you have a decent computer and you've just got a little bit of time and some patience, you're definitely going to be able to figure it out. But anyways, I hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. If it helps you, be sure to leave some comments, let everyone know that it was helpful. And also, if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer it. And anyone in the comment section that wants to help me out with answering it, if you've done a ton of streaming or done something like this, feel free to jump in and help people as well. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Hit me like a time away. Shot